Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the week one Monday Night Football showdown slate on DraftKings. We got the Ravens and the Raiders uh, playing on Monday night. It's our first Monday Night Football game of the year. Super excited to, to watch this game. I'm super excited to break down this showdown slate and you know talk through it with you guys. Uh, just before we do get started with the breakdown, as always, I would appreciate it if you guys would click that like button down below. And also, if you are new to the channel here, make sure you click that subscribe button as well. I do upload a ton of NFL content to this YouTube channel. I'm trying to make videos pretty much every single day, uh, Monday through Friday. I'm trying to get up videos for you know the main slate. I'm covering the showdown slates as well. I'll have videos up for every Monday night, uh, Thursday night showdown slate. I'll be live streaming uh, for those slates as well. So I will be live on Monday night a couple hours before kickoff. Um, if you guys want to check my channel, I will be live talking through the slate with you guys, answering all your questions as always. Uh, but yeah, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, comment, you know, some of your favorite plays for the showdown slate. I'm always reading the comments, guys, always, you know, trying to interact with you. So if you want to share some thoughts on this uh, showdown slate or just leave any feedback, feel free to do so down below in the comment section. But let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, showdown slate for Monday night. And we'll just start off at the top of the player pool, work our way down, you know, talk about all the playable options. So at the top, you know, we'll start off, start off with the quarterbacks first. You got Lamar Jackson at 12400 most expensive player on the slate, as you would expect. And then Derek Carr uh, coming in at 9800 So for me, on these showdown slates, I've, I pretty much say this in every video, I always am going to have interest in the quarterbacks. It's very just it's very unlikely that you see neither quarterback be in the winning lineup. Like most, most times, the winning lineup on these showdown slates is going to have at least one of the two quarterbacks in it, if not both quarterbacks. Um, definitely feel like you're, you're going to want to try and pay up uh, for at least one of the two quarterbacks, especially Lamar Jackson. I mean, Lamar Jackson, clearly the top projected player uh, on this slate and a guy you're going to want to have in a lot of your lineups. He's a really good play in the flex. He's a really good captain option too. And normally I don't play quarterbacks at captain just because quarterbacks don't have as much upside as running backs and receivers do. But obviously Lamar Jackson is just a different breed. I mean, he can he can go out there and throw for 200, 250 yards. He can run for 80 to 100 yards. He's got massive upside, can easily put up 30 plus drafting points pretty much any week. Really, really like Lamar Jackson here. He's clearly a top option. I don't need to tell you that. Um, I think he's a good captain play as well. I think he's the best captain play. If you were going to pay up at captain, I would definitely think Lamar Jackson would probably be the guy to pay up for. Uh, so I, I really like Lamar Jackson. I mean, hard not to like him. Uh, then Derek Hart, 9,800. Obviously not as much upside as someone like Lamar Jackson, but again, he, he's going to you know probably throw the ball 35, 40 times. Uh, the Raiders even at home here are, uh, I think, four-point underdogs, so they should probably be playing from behind. I think we're going to have to see Derek Carr throw the ball a good amount here. Uh, the Raiders could be without Josh Jacobs for this game. Josh Jacobs is currently questionable, so that is going to be something we do need to monitor heading up to kickoff on Monday night. You know, Maybe if Josh Jacobs misses this game, Maybe we see the Raiders go a little bit more pass heavy uh, than they normally would. But at 9,800 on a short on slate, I have interest in Derek Carr for sure. Um, really, both quarterbacks I have a good amount of interest in. I'm definitely going to have a lot of exposure to both quarterbacks. Normally, both quarterbacks are usually some of my highest known players on these short on slates, and I don't think that's going to be any different uh, for this one. But then you have some of the you know top tier uh, pass catchers like for instance, on, on this slate, it's the tight ends. Uh, Darren Waller, 10,800. Mark Andrews coming in at 9K. Y you can't go wrong with either one of Waller or Andrews. I will say that if I am spending this much, I'm just going to play the quarterbacks over the over the tight ends, over Waller and Andrews. But Darren Waller should once again this season be, in, be a target monster. I mean, last year, double-digit targets and, you know, what, like 10 of their 16 games. I mean, he's going to, he's just going to get a ton of, ton of usage. He's going to be the number one on this offense when it comes to, you know, when Derek Carr drops back a throw, he's looking for Darren Waller. Like Darren Waller is going to probably get eight to 10 targets on Monday night. He is expensive though, but we are going to talk about some cheaper guys I do have some interest in that should allow you to pay up for Derek or Darren Waller if you want to go that route. Again, I prefer the quarterbacks over Darren Waller, but at 10,800, Darren Waller is a top tier tight end. He's one of the best just receiving tight ends overall in the league. Got a ton of upside, going to get a ton of volume firmly in play uh, on a showdown slate. And then Mark Andrews, you know, his volume is not nearly as high just because the Ravens don't throw the ball that much, but he's a big, you know, threat in the red zone. He's always a guy that can score multiple touchdowns any week. Again, he's not going to get like 12 targets like, you know, Darren Waller possibly will, but he's still a guy that can catch multiple touchdowns. You know, 
I think if I'm going to pay up for a pass catcher, I'm probably just going to go up to Darren Waller if I can get to him. But Mark Andrews at 9K, I think is is a fine option as well if you are spending up for you know one of these top tier kind of pass catchers. Uh, but then you get down to like the mid range. You got Josh Jacobs, who is questionable, as I mentioned earlier. This is a big injury that we're going to need to watch heading into Monday night. Um, he's questionable with an illness, so I don't really have a lean here. I mean. I, I want to say he probably doesn't play. Normally when a guy gets downgraded to questionable, like, you know, a day before the game starts, that's usually not a good sign. So I would say that Josh Jacobs probably doesn't play Monday night, but this will be something to monitor. If he does wind up getting ruled out, uh, that is going to be a big, big boost for Kenyon Drake. 7,200 for Kenyon Drake. If Jacobs winds up out, I'm going to have a lot of interest in Kenyon Drake. He's going to be for sure one of my favorite options overall. On this short on slate, he would assume a I would say pretty heavy workload if if Jacobs were to miss this game. Now between Jacobs and Drake, like I think when they're both healthy, you are going to see a pretty even split between the two. I think obviously Jacobs has the upper hand. It would probably be like a 60-40 split. But if Jacobs were to miss, I mean, we could see Kenyon Drake get 75-80% of the running back touches, if not more than that. And he's someone that has shown in the past, you know, he does have some upside. He can catch passes. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, they probably will utilize in the passing game. I'm not going to pay this price tag for him if if Josh Jacobs is active, but if Josh Jacobs is out, uh, Kenyon Drake is 7,200. I do like a lot on this shutdown slate. Now, if Josh Jacobs plays, you know, depending on when we get this news, like we could get the news pretty late. Like if we don't get news till seven o'clock uh, that you know Josh Jacobs is active, he probably will be somewhat you know underowned. I would say. I kind of would have interest in him as like a tournament option, just you know, given the fact that he probably will be underowned if he's questionable all day. I don't feel great about Josh Jacobs, especially, you know, overall, this this Raiders backfield, I think, is going to be one I'll probably just avoid for a lot of the season. You know, I think you are going to see somewhat of an even split between, you know, Jacobs and, and Drake. But given the p- possible low ownership we'll get on Josh Jacobs because he's questionable, we don't really know his status. We don't really know when we're going to get this news. That kind of makes me have some interest in him in tournaments. But for now, it's just a wait and see. Uh, I'll, you know, we'll talk more about this when we when we can, like in the live stream on Monday night. Make sure to tune into that. Uh, I'm sure we'll probably have some news on Jacobs by then. We can break it down again. But for now, kind of a wait and see for me when it comes to the Raiders running backs. It's it's going to depend on the status of Josh Jacobs. Uh, but then you have Hollywood Brown, 7,600. I definitely have some interest in Hollywood Brown. I think he is a pretty high upside mid-range option. You know, again, the Ravens are not a very pass-heavy team. I mean, the Ravens are a team that's going to just run the ball as much as possible. But Marquise Brown probably should still get like six to eight targets. You know, this Raiders secondary, I don't think is one we should really be fearing. I mean, this is a pretty solid matchup, I would say, for Marquise Brown. He's someone that has a lot of upside, a super speedy receiver. At 7,600, I definitely like him as a mid-range receiver option you can go to. I will say, though, that if Josh Jacobs is out, I'm going to prefer Kenyon Drake over Marquise Brown. But again, that's news that we just, you know, don't have right now. So we'll move down to the the Ravens running backs, and this is kind of where we get a little bit, you know, a little bit iffy. We just don't really know what we're getting from Baltimore's backfield, but it seems like Tyson Williams is going to be the number one heading into this Monday night game. He's kind of their last healthy running back. Now, they did sign Latavius Murray, and he is on their active roster, and they did also get um, Le'Veon Bell and Devontae Freeman. I believe both of those two guys are still on the practice squad, though. We'll have to wait and see if one of or both of Le'Veon Bell, Devontae Freeman get called up from the practice squad for this game. But right now, it seems like the number one running back for the Ravens is going to be Tyson Williams with Latavius Murray kind of being his backup. Tyson Williams at 6,800. I don't really know too much about him. I think he, I think this is his second year with the Ravens. I don't think he really played much last season, but he's just going to, he's going to have to get touches. I mean, he's really their, their last healthy guy. They don't have Gus Edwards. They don't have Justice Hill. They don't have J.K. Dobbins. Like they're just super thin at the running back position. I know they did sign some guys, obviously, but Tyson Williams should be the number one running back heading into this Monday night game. We know the Ravens are a very run-heavy team. You know, are they going to maybe not be as run-heavy since they don't have a ton of running back, or since they probably are not going to feel great about their running game heading into this game? I don't know. Like, maybe we see Lamar Jackson throw a little bit more than he normally would, or maybe he just runs it himself, which is definitely possible. Uh, But at 6,800, Tyson Williams, I think, is firmly in play in this mid-range. Again, if Josh Jacobs is out, though, like Kenyon Drake is going to be the guy that I prefer in that price range between like between Marquise Brown, Kenyon Drake, Williams. If Jacobs is out, Kenyon Drake's going to be the guy that I probably go with there. But, you know, Tyson Williams, number one running back for Baltimore, or should be the number one running back for Baltimore. Yeah, definitely like him at 6,800. Now, Latavius Murray, 
I mean, they said he's going to have somewhat of a role with Baltimore early on. Like, even though he's only been with the team for a little bit, like, he's already, he's expected to play for, for Baltimore, and he's expected to kind of be their backup running back. I don't know if I can pay 6200 for him, though. Like, that's just a lot to pay for a backup running back that we don't really know how many touches he's going to get. I feel a lot better about Williams, and if I can find the salary, I would just rather get up to Tyson Williams. So, Latavius Murray, I don't think I really have much interest in in that mid-range. If he was a little bit cheaper, maybe I would go there, but 6200 a lot to pay for Latavius Murray when we don't really know exactly how much they're going to use him, you know, how many touches he's really going to get. Hard to really pay 6200 for him, at least in, you know, in my opinion. Now, getting down to, you know, this lower 5K range, uh, this is where I think we can find some, some value. Um, first off, I want to start off with the Raiders receivers. You got Brian Edwards at 5600 You got uh, Henry Ruggs at 5k you know these should be the number one and number two receiver for the rate receivers for the Raiders this year uh, these should be the two guys on the outside Edwards you know didn't really do much last year he wasn't a guy they really utilized much but this Raider like they don't have um I even I forgot who was on their team last year that they had but what with basically their receiver core now is Brian Edwards Henry Ruggs is kind of their top two receivers with Hunter Renfro you know operating out of the slot Again, Edwards didn't do much last year, but I think he's definitely going to have more of a more of a role this season. I think he's going to be targeted more. He's just going to be on the field more, and that's really all that we can ask for. So, 5600 as a cheaper option, definitely have some interest in, in Brian Edwards if he's going to be, you know, an every down receiver. Um, I like him, and then at, uh, 5K Henry Ruggs, I would say is probably my favorite of the of the Raiders receivers. You know, we will talk about Hunter Renfro in a second, but. Henry Ruggs for 5K, another guy that you know was kind of disappointing last season. I think a lot of people had pretty high hopes for him, uh, including myself. I was pretty high on Henry Ruggs last year, and you know he just he didn't do anything. I mean, he had like one good game against KC where he caught a long touchdown, but other than that, it was a very very disappointing season for Henry Ruggs. He was not targeted much at all. The most targets he saw in one game was five. Like, I think that's going to change though this season. I mean, Henry Ruggs is still a very talented receiver. He's going to be, again, an every down guy. You know, him and, him and Brian Edwards are going to be the two guys operating on the outside. At 5K, I'm willing to just bet on the talent of Henry Ruggs and probably the, the opportunity that he should get this season. He should see more targets than he probably did last year. He's going to be on the field a ton. I like him a lot at 5K. I think he's a value uh, just play overall. He makes some sense. And even if you want to go a little bit cheaper at captain, I think Henry Ruggs has the, the big play upside, the potential to be a winning captain on this slate. So, He's for sure someone I'm looking to at 5K. Him and Brian Edwards, I think, are both uh, both very solid options in this uh, you know lower mid range. Uh, don't want to skip over Sammy Watkins though, 5200. He should be the number two receiver uh, for the Ravens this year behind Marquise Brown. He's going to be probably an every down guy. You know, again, the Ravens they don't throw the ball that much, so this is not a team I you know I don't love going too heavy on the Ravens passing game just because it seems to never pay off just because they don't throw the ball that much, but. Sammy Watkins, I think, is firmly in play if you do want to go to him. Now, I probably would prefer Henry Ruggs over Sammy Watkins. I think I'd prefer Brian Edwards as well. But really, all three of these guys, I mean, you're getting number two, number three receiver, or yeah, you're getting number one, number two receivers for 5K. Like, Brian Edwards should be the number one. Maybe Henry Ruggs. I mean, we don't really know. But Henry Ruggs, Brian Edwards are, you know, one, two in the receiver pecking order for the Raiders. And then you got a number two receiver in Sammy Watkins. All these guys are, all three of these guys, I think, are in play as value cheap options that give you some upside. Um, I'm for sure going to be, have, or sure going to have some exposure to all three of those guys in that 5K range. But then you get like the defenses, the kickers. The defenses, I tend to just fade on showdown slate. Sometimes it comes back to bite me, but most times the defenses are not going to put up a good enough score to where you really have to have them. Like, I'm just, I'm fine just, you know, not playing the defenses and just hoping that, you know, there's not a pick six or a scoop and score something stupid happens so I'll be fading the defenses the kickers I think are fine as like last pieces in normally I don't really go out of my way to play kickers but kickers are pretty safe options they're going to give you most times six to eight points minimum sometimes they'll give you double digits but yeah if you want to play one of the kickers it's fine normally I don't play both kickers rarely do you see both kickers in the winning lineup Um, so I probably would just limit myself to one of the two kickers you know, when I'm building my lineups, but they're, they're all, or they are in play for cheap. Um, I would for sure rather play the kickers than the defenses, I think. Uh, but yeah, like Le'Veon Bell, just don't think we can go there. I just don't think, for one, we don't even know if he's going to be active. Um, but even if he is active, we don't really know how what his role is going to be. He's probably, they're going to be their third, you know, their RB3 
not not really playable at 4,200. Um, but then Hunter Renfro, he's the guy that I do want to talk about as a cheap value option. 2,800 for Hunter Renfro, super, super cheap. You know, not someone that really has a ton of upside, but should probably get five, six targets. He's going to be the Raiders slot receiver. He was their pretty much their slot receiver last year. Again, you know, he's not a guy that's going to go out there and just break a slate and put up 30 DraftKings points, but if he gets you four catches for 40 yards, I mean, if he scores eight DraftKings points, there's a legit possibility that he is in the winning lineup because he's only 2,800. At 2,800, you don't really need too much from him to, to be a good value at this price point, and there's definitely potential that he could catch a touchdown, and if he does that, you're probably going to have to have him to take down a tournament. So if I'm looking for punt value plays, guys that are really cheap that have some upside, Hunter Renfro, 2,800, really, really like him. Um, I think he's just underpriced. He should be he should definitely be more expensive than the kickers and the defenses. I don't know why Hunter Renfro is only 2,800. It's it's rare that you find you know slot receivers, number three receivers that are this cheap. I know Duvernay is a slot receiver as well, but again, like Baltimore just doesn't utilize their third string wide receivers that much. I mean, Duvernay at most probably gets a few targets. Maybe he gets like a deep target and catches a long touchdown, but I don't really have much confidence in him. You know, in terms of target, in terms of or just target share in the offense. I think Hunter Renfro's target share is just going to be way more secure. It's going to be a lot higher than Duvernay's. So if I'm going to play one of these cheap receivers, it's definitely going to be uh, Renfro for me over over Duvernay. And then, like, yeah, Devontae Freeman, again, he's on the practice squad. He could get called up for this game. Even if he does get called up, I don't think he's going to get enough touches to be useful. Peyton Barber, though, I do want to mention as a punt option, only if um, Josh Jacobs gets ruled out. Because if Josh Jacobs does get ruled out, Peyton Barber would become the backup running back behind Kenyon Drake. Again, ba- backup running backs, I-, I rarely play. But on showdown slates, you can definitely play the backup running backs, especially when they are cheap. And that's obviously the case here with Peyton Barber at only 2K. I would assume that if Josh Jacobs sits, we probably get three, four carries from Peyton Barber. Maybe he gets a couple targets at 2K. You could just get lucky and he gets his, like he gets a touchdown or something. It's not a play you're going to feel great about, but if you need to, to save some salary, I do have some interest in Peyton Barber at 2K, only if you know Josh Jacobs gets ruled out. Uh, but definitely Hunter Renfro is the value guy that I like down here now. Like Zay Jones, I don't think I'm going to go to, just doesn't get enough targets in the offense. At most, he's probably going to just see a few targets. I think he's he's like their four-string wide receiver at this point. You know, He's behind Brian Edwards. He's behind Hunter Renfro. He's behind Henry Ruggs. You basically just got to hope that he comes onto the field, runs a few routes, and maybe he catches like a touchdown or something. I'm not going to play Zay Jones, but if you want to just take a GPP shot on him, if you want to take a dart throw, hope he scores a touchdown, you know, you could do that. Same for like a Willie Sneed, but once you get past like Hunter Renfro, once you get past Peyton Barber, it gets pretty thin down here. I don't really see too much else I'm liking that, you know, this cheap. Probably going to cut off my player, really Renfro. I would say Renfro is the cheap guy that I like. Once you get past Renfro... There's not too much else I like down here. Only guy that I would mention would be Peyton Barber if uh, Josh Jacobs gets ruled out. But that probably does it for the player pool, guys. I think we you know, pretty much talked about all the playable options. Uh, before we kind of talk about roster construction real quick, I do want to give a quick shout out to Price Picks. If you guys have not checked out Price Picks yet, um, check them out. Link down below in the description or just use promo code NOAH. Um, when you sign up for Price Picks, you use that promo code. You do get a 100% match on your first deposit up to $100. So if you do sign up for Prize Picks with my promo code, you deposit $100. Uh, Prize Picks will match that, give you an additional $100 to play with, but you don't have to deposit $100. You could deposit, you know, 50. You could deposit 30. Um, whatever you deposit, they will match that up to 100. So check out Prize Picks. Use promo code Noah when you do sign up. Uh, they have a lot of options available for this, you know, Monday night game. They're more of a player prop based site. Not nec- you're not going to build out a lineup on Prize Picks. You're basically taking player props. So they have the player props listed for you know almost all the players. They have fantasy point projections for each player as well. So if you see some of these, you have a good lean, like you want to take the over or the under, um, you could definitely do that. But I would say some early picks that I like on, on price picks, You know the upside on Henry Ruggs, as I mentioned, I think it's probably just 9.5 fantasy points is probably too low of a projection for him. If he's going to be the number one, number two receiver in this offense, he's going to probably get six, seven targets. The Raiders should be playing from behind. I do like his overs on price picks. Um, if you want to look or if you want to go to his receiving yards, he only has a 34.5 projection in terms of receiving yards. I kind of like both of his fantasy point 
and um, receiving yard projection. But if I had to pick one, it probably would be receiving yards. That receiving yard number does feel a little bit too low. Uh, so I do like over 30.5 receiving yards for Henry Ruggs. If you wanted to go over on Brian Edwards, like I don't mind that either. That's another one I have some interest in. But the rest of these, I mean, most of these feel pretty accurate. I will say Lamar Jackson, like the over on his rushing yards, I kind of have a good amount of interest in just because I think they will be, they're going to lean on Lamar Jackson, you know, with their running game and with their running backs. So their backfield so depleted right now, I think we're going to see Lamar just take it himself a ton in this game. There's a good opportunity. He, you know, he runs the ball like 15 times and I would not be surprised. So 69.5 rushing yards for Lamar Jackson. I think he can easily go over that. I think he does run maybe a little bit more than normal um, in this game. And probably, you know, until this, until this Ravens backfield gets fully healthy, we might see the, the the workload for Lamar in terms of his his legs be a little bit heavier than it normally would. But the, the rest of these projections, you know, again, it's just a first look, but the rest of these do feel pretty accurate. Maybe over on Derek Carr passing touchdowns, you know, if they're going to be playing from behind, forced to throw, you know, Derek Carr could easily throw two touchdowns in this game. So honestly, I wouldn't even mind the over on that one. But those are kind of just a few picks I like for this, uh, for this Monday night game. Again, guys, if you want to check out the full board, you can look through everything. If you want to make some picks for yourself, you can do that. Uh, just make sure to use promo code NOAH when you sign up for Price Picks. Link down below in the description. Again, or just you know enter that code when you sign up. Get you some picks in for tonight's game. Um, again, check out their board and, and see, see if you like anything. But I think that does it for the video, guys. Real quickly, though, I did want to uh, just cover roster construction real quick, kind of talk through some lineup builds. So, you know, we mentioned it earlier. If I'm paying up at captain, normally I don't play quarterbacks at captain, but I think Lamar Jackson is for sure an exception. He's a guy that I do like a lot. And if I'm playing probably one lineup on the show on slate, honestly, I probably would be playing Lamar at captain. I'm going to I'm going to have a ton of exposure to Lamar. Honestly, if I'm playing like 150 lineups, I, I literally might play Lamar in every single lineup. Obviously, I'm not going to play him in captain in every single lineup, but I probably would have I probably would have him in captain at probably 30, 40%, and then the rest of that being the flex. Like I definitely would be all in on Lamar Jackson on this uh, on the showdown slate. But if you play him a captain, that leads you 6280 left per player. So you're going to have to find some value. And we did talk about you know some cheap options I like. Hunter Renfro, for sure, one of the first values. I would be clicking in. You plug him in. Now you're up to 7150. So then you could probably like you could still fit in like Derek Carr. You could play both the quarterbacks for sure. If Josh Jacobs is out, I really like you know Kenyon Drake in that mid range. You play him in the mid range. You got 5800 left per player for two spots. And we talked about some of these 5K receivers: Henry Ruggs, Brian Edwards, Sammy Watkins. I have interest in all three of those guys. You could play two of those three. You could probably play you could play one of the two or one of the three guys, and then that would leave you like enough to play. Maybe Latavius Murray if you want to do that. Or, yeah, you probably would just have to play two of these three receivers if you wanted to fill out this build. But there's plenty of ways you could, you could build on this showdown slate. But for me, I think paying up for Lamar at captain is something that I'm for sure going to be doing. If I'm going to the mid-range at captain, like if Jacobs is out, I think Kenyon Drake is for sure a good captain, optin, uh, captain option in the mid-range. I think Henry Ruggs is a cheaper captain with upside I like. So those three guys I'm kind of focused in on for my captains right now. We'll have to wait and see, though, you know, if Jacobs winds up playing or not. But if he's if he does get ruled out, I have a lot of interest in Kenyon Drake. But, but yeah, guys, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. You know, we talked about some captains I like. We talked about Rocks construction for this showdown slate. We hit on prize picks. I think we covered it all. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching this video. I hope you did enjoy. If you did enjoy, make sure you click that like button down below before you do get out of here, guys. Click that subscribe button as well. Also, be sure to comment down below some of your favorite uh, plays for this showdown slate, maybe who... Uh, who you are looking to target at captain, whether that, you know, paying up for Lamar Jackson or maybe going to some of those cheaper guys that I mentioned, maybe like a Henry Ruggs or a, you know, a Sammy Watkins, if you think going cheap at captain is viable on the showdown site. But yeah, feel free to comment down below some of your favorite plays or just give any feedback. If you, I'm always reading the comment section, guys, always, you know, replying to all your comments, but best of luck on the showdown slate. Make sure to tune into my live stream on Monday night. I will be live on my YouTube channel a couple hours before kickoff. We'll be covering the showdown slate once again answering all your questions as always. But best of luck tonight, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.